Season's not totally finished yet, but we all we really want to get to talking about some of the overall award winners for the short conference. Now there were just a handful of games left. We're gonna start with the award that's nearest and dearest to your heart, Rob. The coaches. Yeah. Uh, the overall coach of the year in the short conference. I know you have a couple candidates in mind, so let's talk about them right now. Who I mean, let's. Who, who are the top contenders? Let, I mean, let's. I mean, there's a lot of great coaching stories out there. We know that, but let's narrow it down to four. All right, and two of uh, three of them are all playing for the state championship. You got to. You win yeah. a state championship. If you're and still playing this time of year. You did something right. Something's right. So let's. You know, and not in any order, but let's talk about like Dave Ozowitz at Tom Driver North. He's 13 and 0, never been done before. Could be 14 and 0 with all the other records that they're breaking over there. And this could be one of the all-time great teams, arguably, arguably at some some households right there. So I think Tom Driven North, Dave Oswitz has got to be a candidate. You have and Mike. Now, what, and I'll pop in real quick because this is always an interesting discussion to me for Coach of the Year. Some people say, oh, his team's loaded. They have a ridiculous amount of talent and all that. But my whole point is if you deliver on all that talent and you dominate with everything, you should be credited for that. It's not always the coach who seems to take the team that people don't think is that great on paper and overachieve. Sometimes it could be the coach that takes a loaded team and delivers on their potential. He's a leader. And you also have egos. And everybody wants the football. And, you know, we've been on the sidelines, so we've seen it. Um you got to be able to kind of control all the different egos out there and make it work. And he's made it work. They're 13 and 0. End of discussion. Mike Lang of Red Bank Catholic. I mean, going for his second state championship, doing a great job, having, hasn't lost in the short conference in quite a while. You have to say he is a guy. If he wins the, the state championship for the second year in a row, he's definitely got to be a high candidate for a short conference, right, coach? And I think that he's a guy that has the most pressure on him from year to year because that, that roster is so good. Yes. You, if you even slip up twice, you're, you know, you have people wondering, well, who, you know, what's the problem over there? What's going on? You know, <laughs> oh, you, God, you might yeah. go nine and two and it's like, well, that was a disaster. So, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a lot of pressure at those non-public programs with those kind of rosters you're expected to deliver and he's delivered. They're back in the state finals again. And then Jeremy Schulte. His first year, been in the program forever. And I feel he's, like he's really roared into the picture the yeah. last couple of weeks. Yeah, he's done a great job, um, you know, doing what he's doing, getting to a place where, uh, you know, where they wanted to be in the beginning of the season. So Jeremy Schulte is also another candidate. And let's go. And I would say, you know, he would be the dark horse behind those guys initially. But the big thing is, they're playing a Caldwell team that is undefeated yeah, and has won 27 games in a row in the group team yeah. final. So yeah. if they stun them, that's a pretty darn good argument to be coach of the year. Boy, are we creating these storylines for every one of them? And then the other one, and I'm gonna it's gonna be out of right field, but Jason Degato of Marlboro. I mean, what he did to a program that hasn't been there in years to make the state playoffs with their top player getting injured the way he did, and it didn't look good, and they still won two more games, beat a Washington Township home, and did it. You know, he didn't win the state championship, but he did win. First playoff win since 1994. First playoff appearance since 1999, and their most wins from that season. And like you said, no A.J. Schwartz for most of the season after he suffered a season-ending injury. Cassidy, another one of their top players, didn't play against yeah. Tom's River North in the semifinals and missed other parts of games with injuries. So, like, your two real standout guys, you didn't even have them for the whole season. I thought the job he did was phenomenal. I mean, we know the history of Marlboro football. It's not pretty. You know, for the last couple of years, they've really started to turn around. And this, to me, was a, a, a special, like, breakthrough season for them. I mean, if you think about these through those three teams playing for the state championship – if everyone wins, it's like, how do we justify this guy? I know. With that guy? It's like, can you help us out? One person win it, and, and it would be so much easier. A lot of great. No, because again, you'll though. get back to that argument. You'll say, look at what Jason Degato did with yeah. somewhat of an undermanned team at a program that hasn't done a lot in yeah. 30 years. But then you go, okay, but look at what Dave Oserwitz just did. Every historical record breaking everything, if they go 14 and 0, yeah. and you say, how is that not a superlative performance? Then you say, RBC, you know how hard it is to win a non-public bracket in New Jersey, and they did it two years in a row. 
So there'd be that. And then Schulte, you'd say, well, this was a team that, you know, they suffered losses early in the season and they thought, ah, oh, it's a kind of a mediocre Rumson team. Here they are playing for the first overall Group 2 state title. And again, can't. if they go out and shock Caldwell, you say, well, they just took down a team that had New Jersey's longest winning streak. So, we can't even flip a coin because it doesn't have four sides. So it's like yes, we, we got really to make a tough decision. It's going to be really tough. But that's, that's the way it is every year.